Bernie Sanders is now the Senate Budget Committee chairman, and he is already flexing his muscles. And this is just truly, it's awesome to see. It gives me at least some hope, a little bit. Not like a lot, but some hope. So as Warren Gunnels tweets out, today, Budget Committee Chair Sanders introduced the $1.9 trillion budget resolution allowing the Senate to boost direct payments to $2,000, provide $400 a week to the unemployed, uh, raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, prevent mass layoffs and more, and the motion to proceed passed 50 to 49. Let's go. And I love this because, you know, Democrats, they were already too kind to Republicans. Like, they tried to reach out, tried to give them some input, and they already proved within a matter of weeks they're clowns. They're not serious actors. Like, the uh, the counter offer that the 10 moderate Republicans proposed to Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus package, it should get them laughed out of the room. Like, they're not serious about actually delivering to the American people at a time of crisis. So, sideline them pushed them out of the way. You gave them a chance. Now it's time to pass what the American people need uh, using reconciliation. Now on the floor, Bernie Sanders responded to um, attacks that Republicans have lobbed against him because he is pushing for budget reconciliation to make change. And uh, what he said here was just, it was perfect. Now, Mr. President, I have heard from some of my Republican colleagues who tell us that, well, this reconciliation concept that's a radical idea why are you using reconciliation and they are telling us that it is absolutely imperative that we go forward in a bipartisan way and require 60 votes for passage but i must say that when republicans used this same reconciliation process mr president i didn't hear much about bipartisanship at that point in fact, Republicans used the reconciliation process to provide trillions of dollars in tax breaks to the top 1% and large profitable corporations by a simple majority vote. The only people who voted for that bill were Republicans. No bipartisanship in that bill. My Republican colleagues used reconciliation to open up the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for the drilling of oil, once again, by a simple majority. Only people who supported that were Republicans, not one Democrat. As we all remember, painfully, my Republican colleagues used the reconciliation process to try to repeal the Affordable Care Act and throw up to 32 million Americans off of the health care they currently have. And as you'll recall, Mr. President, that was a 100 percent partisan vote, which fortunately lost by one vote. Further, weeks, weeks before a presidential election, last election, my Republican colleagues pushed through their nominee for the Supreme Court with 50 votes. A few weeks before the election, not one Democrat supported that nominee. Totally partisan vote. Well, as the incoming chair of the Senate Budget Committee, <coughs> this is what I believe. If Republicans can use reconciliation to help the wealthy and the powerful, and pass legislation strongly opposed by the American people, we can and must use reconciliation to help Americans recover from the worst economic and public health crisis in the modern history of our country. This is why I love Bernie Sanders. This is why I love Bernie Sanders, because he's calling out the GOP's hypocrisy, a blatant double standard. Why is it acceptable to use budget reconciliation if we're delivering tax cuts to the rich, or if we are confirming a Supreme Court nominee that corporate America really, really wants on that court? But the minute we try to actually push through things that help the American people, especially at a time of crisis, well, all of a sudden, we're questioning, where's the bipartisanship? 
Why can't we work together? Why can't we hold hands and sing kumbaya after we've been obstructing everything that Democrats have tried to do for the last, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 years? I mean, Republicans are, they're not serious. They're a party that has been hijacked by not only extremists, but private interests, corporate America. And it's not like the Democratic Party isn't also, you know, um, controlled by big business, but the Republican Party, they're not even trying to pretend to represent people. They won't even do the bare minimum. And like, if you want people to spend money, have purchasing, purchasing power to buy the things that capitalists produce, then you can't like bleed them dry. You can't only give them crumbs and expect the wheels of capitalism to keep on turning. That's just not the way that it works. So Democrats, at least being capitalists that they are, acknowledge that if we don't have money to buy all of the goods and things that capitalists make or their workers make, to be more specific, then the system isn't going to work. But Republicans have become ideologues. They are only about delivering to corporate America. And if they can't actually deliver anything to corporate America, if it's just about helping out normal Americans, then they're, they're not in favor of it unless there's something for their corporate donors. It's why they agreed to the CARES Act only because there was a bailout for large multinational corporations. So it's just they're so transparent. And Bernie Sanders is basically stating the obvious, but it doesn't get said enough in D.C. So I love what he said there. And I'm looking forward to seeing the way that he um, governs as the uh, chair of the Senate Budget Committee. Love it.